Welcome back. We are here on eTurl looking at the commodities market and the precious metals market. And um, I have decided to uh, add the US dollar index um, to this these videos. And um, I will I'll include the US dollar index in every video from now on due to the fact that it has a significant effect on the value of um, commodities and uh, and so on, and uh, therefore, um, it is a good analysis to include uh, when discussing uh, commodities and precious metals. So, on Friday, most of um, commodities rose due to the fact that we had a massive decrease in the US dollar index. So, there's a negative correlation between the US dollar index and the commodities and so on. However, Sorry, I need to include that is not a hundred percent correlation. So it doesn't mean that when the U.S. dollar uh, decreases, like it did on Friday, that all commodities they they rise. That's not the case. It is most likely that they will rise when the U.S. dollar decreases, but it is not always the case. For example, most commodities rose on Friday. However, oil. WTI, WTI, and Brint, for example, uh, declined uh, around 2%. So it is not all commodities that um, will be affected, but in most circumstances, circumstances, that is going to be the case. So US dollar has been trading uh, above the 50 moving average for uh, the last three weeks now. And on Friday, we broke through the 50 moving average. And this may indicate that we are going to uh, go back to these lows of, uh, of September and of August and also in July when we went all the way down to uh, the lowest was 91.80. Uh, we may go all the way down there, but we need to um, see another red candlestick on Monday in order to conclude that we are going to uh, go lower with this um, with this index. And what that would mean is that, for example, most commodities will increase in value. Uh, gold will be uh, affected. It will it'll increase the value of gold and silver. And for example, this is one of the main reasons why gold shut up on on, on Friday, the same goes for silver, went up around 5%. Um, so, it may inca- indicate, because the indicators are very bearish uh, for, for the US dollar index, we can see that MACD uh, has crossed the signal line. We can see that uh, stochastic is looking really bearish at this point, and the same goes for the RSI. So, if we have another red candlestick, that will indica- indicate that we'll go to these lows of um, July, August, and September. And it has to be um, uh, also included that this was major support. We were hanging around here for several months and we did not break down. We were actually trading sideways and we haven't gotten to these lows yet. So ex- expect a lot of support when you get to these lows. This will also affect, for example, stocks. Stocks tend to to increase. The indexes, the uh, S&P 500, Dow Jones, and the Nasdaq usually increase when this index also decreases. If we were to pull back from here, we are uh, we have to uh, clear the 50 moving average. Uh, it was expected for this index to go all the way up towards the 200 moving average. Um, that was expected, uh, but it pulled back uh, a few weeks ago and has been drifting uh, steadily downwards ever since. Um, and this candlestick is really bearish for, for, uh, to, be, to be fairly honest. I would not be surprised if we got additional red candlestick here indicating that we were going to go lower. If we go, were to break up, we would head towards the 200 moving average. It would be our, uh, first of all, this high, we had to clear this, and afterwards we would go towards the 200 moving average. So if you look at gold, so gold was one of the few commodities that basically 
uh, declined on Friday's session. And probably one of the reasons why it did decline is that it rose around 10% from the lows to these highs. And at the moment, we have created a double top here. And that is a really, really bearish shine. Furthermore, one of the reasons why we had this decline was speculation that the strike in Norway was going to escalate. Uh, bad news, strike is over. So there's no more bad news from Norway. Furthermore, the storm, it has technically passed or it will be finished in the weekend. So no more bad news from the storm. Um, and the only thing that I basically see can increase the value here is the US dollar index. If it completely falls apart, if it falls below the lows of July, August, September, then yes, we may see this market go higher. But at this point, no, I don't, I don't believe that's going to be the case. Um, if we were to go higher from here, we'll go to the maximum of uh, uh, $33.70, which is the top here. Um, we need technically a war in the Middle East or something like that in order to go significantly higher. That there's just not a demand out there for, uh, for oil at this point. Additional bad news for, for bulls is that uh, Mitch McConnell, majority leader in the Senate, basically came out and said, there's not going to be any stimulus before the election. And I would be really surprised if there were any stimulus after the election, because there's going to be a lot of chaos in U.S. politics after the election. Don't believe that stimulus is going to be at the top of their list. Um, but at least there's not going to be a stimulus before the election uh, that is occurring to the majority leader in the United States Senate. So he has a big say in this. If we were to break down from here, we are basically just on the 50 moving average. Where is it similar to this pattern uh, a few weeks ago? Um, if we see a breakdown from here, then the next target will be the 200 moving average, which, at, which is at 39.9 dollars. After that, we are going to these lows. There's nothing basically in between here. We'll go to these lows of 37 and 36, which is, um, in my view, the more realistic thing uh, to happen here. Technical indicators are showing uh, exhaustion. The stochastic is basically becoming flat. It will cross the signal line on Monday, indicating bearish uh, momentum. The same goes for the MACD. It's becoming fairly flat. Probably will take one or two days for this to basically fall apart. But I do expect that is what's going to happen. Um, only question is whether or not we will break these lows or that whether or not we will just trade sideways from here. But I would be really surprised if we went higher than this. But if we do, the highest that we most will go is to $33.64. RSI is also fairly um, negative at this point, so um, I am uh, shorter in this market. I'm not thinking about even buying this market. So if you look at natural gas, natural gas exploded to the upside on Friday. Um, it had a fairly big pullback at the end of the session, but technical indicators for natural gas are really uh, really bullish so this may go higher I would not enter this market at this point this is not the right point for a buy because we could have a pullback similar to this towards the 50 moving average I'm not expecting this to to break the 50 moving average if it does it will go towards the 200 moving average and and so on but this is just too bullish at this moment and and there is, um, and the, as long as the weather conditions are as they are in the United States at this point, uh, this is not going to break down significantly. A breakdown or a pullback towards the 50 moving average is a buying opportunity for natural gas. After this, uh, we are at this point, we basically broke these highs. So 
at this point, if we go higher from here, we'll have to look quite a lot better. We have to, we are going to this size at the 3.366. And after that, yeah, the sky's the limit, fairly, fairly honest. This is a, a very aggressive market. When it starts increasing your value, it is um, it just just explodes like we did in uh, in 2018. However, I would not at this point, I would not use high leverage for natural gas. Just as an advice for people that, that trade in the natural gas, if you trade uh, leverage higher than 10, you can wipe your account within a few seconds. So look at the copper. So copper has rallied from its lows of 2.83. Uh, and it went all the way to the top here and fell back. So we have significant resistance at this area here. So copper was one of the commodities that, that benefited significantly from the, uh, the decline in the US dollar index. But we again found, um, found resistance at this level. And we may create a double top here. We may see copper fall again. And I would not be surprised. It won't happen all of the sudden. We will most likely hang around here for some while. If we basically see a candlestick that is exhausted, um, if we see these technical indicators, which are really bullish at this moment, it start to, uh, to, uh, to, um, to uh, fade downwards, then we may see a massive decline in this market because there's no real reason similar to to uh, to oil there's just not the demand out there for 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 these commodities and and therefore we may see a massive decline but at this point these markets are really bullish all the indicators are pointing to higher uh, higher price levels if we were to break down from here, of course, the 50 moving average will be support. A breakdown below the 50 moving average will open us to these levels of 2.83, which was previous support. So if you look at gold, so gold also exploded to the upside on Friday due to the decrease in the US dollar index, and so did silver, which we'll check afterwards. However, we are still trading underneath the 50 moving average. Uh, we did have a trend line here, which was broken. We did break this trend line. However, we are still trading underneath the 50 moving average. We have not tested it. The technical indicators are really bullish for gold at the moment. You can just see the, the stochastic is pointing almost straight upwards, which is really rare for the stochastic. You may see uh, choppiness on Monday session, not this explosion to the upside, uh, because this just isn't sustainable. Um, you just look all the way back to the past. It's not sustainable, this kind of, of, of price increase. Um, the MACD has crossed the signal line, indicating bullish momentum, and the RSI is also looking really uh, bullish, show... So we will most likely test the 50 moving average. If we get rejected from that, we'll probably go back down towards uh, 1862, or uh, this is, um, yeah, most likely this area here, which was proven to be a significant support. We have additional resistance above that we have to get through. This entire area was significant uh, resistant in the past it is just above the 50 moving average and if we break the 50 moving average we need to get through this level here before we can go to these highs of 2100 and so on and beyond that in the long run we will uh, definitely go to those highs it's just a question about it's just a question about when uh as long as the central banks around the world are just pumping cheap liquidity into the markets, uh, the US dollar, for example, will weaken even more. 
and with in the long run and therefore this market will also go higher so silver silver also was up around five percent on friday session we are still trading underneath the 50 moving average this does not mean that we are going straight to the all-time highs it's just that silver for example similar to uh, natural gas and some other the uh, other of the commodities are are just really aggressive really volatile when they in their changes for example this was one day 13 13 minus 13 percent this was additional minus 8 percent all the way down here another minus 13 percent so it is a really volatile market when uh, when it changes direction however we haven't seen this kind of increase we saw the discrete decrease but we did not see that that kind of increase we have to go all the way back here to see these kind of moves to the upside so before we uh, we basically have to get through the 50 moving average to confirm that we are going to test this area here so there was a area uh, sorry here very similar to the gold just above the 50 moving average which proved to be a significant resistant area we just didn't manage to get through we tried to go several times to the to the upside but it didn't happen um, we first have to clear the 50 moving average then get through this area and then we can say that we are going to these highs of the 30 30s a breakdown from here which would leave us uh, all the way down to the uh, twenty dollar level or the two hundred moving average, but the technical indicators for silver are really bullish, all of them. So look at Kakoa. Kakoa broke down and then bounced. At this point, we are trading underneath the two hundred moving average. Uh, the technical indicators are are looking more promising than they did previously i was thinking i was actually uh, expecting this to break down uh, further further all the way down to these levels that was that was a possibility but this pullback did see buyers come in and pressure the price the price up so we may if we see a uh, um, additional increase above the 200 moving average then we'll have the 50 moving average as resistant. If we break um, through the 50 moving average, then we'll go to these highs here. There's technically nothing that's preventing us to go to going all the way to 2.695. Um, that will probably take a few days. The MACD uh, that is quite far away from the signal line. Stochastic has crossed the signal line, indicating bullish momentum. However, the RSI is flat or it's curving downwards, which is indicating bearish momentum so it's not a good market to enter either if you're a trader or a seller you need a breakdown from here in order to sell this market you need a break uh, above the 50 moving average in order to be a buyer so you look at platinum platinum uh, gapped up on friday session uh, um, increased all the way to this area here which was fairly interesting it did not go all the way to the 50 moving average however it went to these highs and then broke down again and this may indicate two things either we will continue up towards the 50 moving average uh, which the indicators are indicating they are fairly uh, bullish at this point or we will uh, break down towards the 200 moving average and then just trade sideways for the foreseeable future. I am um, more of a buyer on this market than um, a seller. We also have created this long-term trend line here, which will act as um, as um, a support and this could also be a triangle it could be that we are going to trade sideways here and then either break to the downside or break to the upside 
that is also a possibility. I am just not favoring a breakdown to the downside. And the reason B is that there's just so much resistance, no support underneath that um, a breakdown will take technically forever to, uh, to, uh, to get through all of this resistance here. So I am favoring, favoring um, a breakout to the upside. This will most likely trade sideways, bounce from this uh, trend line till we get to this corner and then we have a break, uh, breakout. Just keep in mind that we have the 50 moving average just above, which will act as resistant, but we need to break through that as well. If we were to break to the upside, we would go to these highs first, 947, and then we'll go to this level at 980, and then we'll go to 1002. So, hope you find this video helpful. You're welcome to subscribe to our channel by hitting the support button down here in the corner. Uh, subscriber button, I mean, uh, and hit a like to this video and you're welcome to click the bell button as well in order to see our newest videos. Um, yes, good luck and, and happy trading.